Carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis. Does the carnivore diet actually work for MS? and how can you get the best outcomes? In this video, we're gonna go through everything you need to know about the carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis and how it compares to other diets and what you should avoid. We'll also share some tips on how to monitor your progress. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dastri, a surgeon dedicated to reducing inflammation caused by gut microbiome imbalances. I myself struggled with digestive dysfunction and autoimmune inflammation in my early 20s and successfully put together a methodology that works not only in me, but also my patients. My method is called the MindGut Immunity Approach and has resulted in thousands of successes over the years. If you or someone you know struggles with multiple sclerosis and wants to rid yourself of inflammation for good, check out our website, mgiclinic.com, and schedule a discovery call with me. I'll walk you through some practical steps for multiple sclerosis recovery and how to achieve lasting results in just six weeks. Let's break this down. There are studies supporting the carnivore diet for managing multiple sclerosis, but there's also research suggesting the opposite. Opposite, some even linking the carnivore diet to the development of multiple sclerosis. So with such differing perspectives, how do we figure out what really works for multiple sclerosis? As I mentioned in my ideal diet for multiple sclerosis video, in my clinic, I focus on creating personalized diet plans based on four essential criteria. These criteria help me decide if a diet will be effective for managing multiple sclerosis. Here's a recap of those criteria. Number one is phytonutrients. Number two is macronutrient requirement. Number three is microbiome specificity. And number four is food sensitivity. For more details, check out the ideal diet for multiple sclerosis video, but I'll summarize these also here. Now let's take a look at the carnivore diet and how it compares to other diets like the Fido diet that I recommend for multiple sclerosis. Just to review, harmful bacteria and fungus in your intestine ferment carbohydrates leading to bloating, gas, and inflammation. Since 80% of the immune system is in the gut, when you have multiple sclerosis symptoms, most of that inflammation is starting in the gut. And if you're wondering if the carnivore diet works for multiple sclerosis, yes, sometimes it does, and that's only because it eliminates carbs from the equation, minimizing the source of inflammation. The carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis revolves around animal-based foods, removing all fiber and carbs while adding electrolytes for balance. The Terry Walls protocol is also very similar to this. The carnivore diet eliminates all carbohydrates, fibers, sugars, starches, and lactose, removing any food source for harmful bacteria and fungi, and only providing calories from fats and proteins. This differs from keto or low carb diets, which might still include small amounts of carbs, making the carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis a more extreme approach. By cutting out the carbohydrates, the carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis helps reduce inflammation, and this is why it's used as a temporizing mechanism during flare-ups or when other dietary approaches haven't worked for people with MS. But as I mentioned earlier, with those four key criteria, cutting out carbs may help manage symptoms in the short term, but it doesn't address the long-term imbalance of the gut microbiome, which leads to neuron inflammation. I'll dive deeper into this next. Let's look at the first criteria, phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are plant-based micronutrients with powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. These nutrients are especially important for people with multiple sclerosis as they can help reduce the chronic inflammation associated with the condition. Here is a 2023 study on polyphenols and their antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective effects in managing multiple sclerosis. This 2024 study explores the effects of natural compounds on immune regulation, oxidative stress suppression, and the protection and regeneration of myelin in multiple sclerosis. Phytonutrients come in various forms, including polyphenols, terpenes, thiocyanates, fiber, resistant starches, omega fats, and alkaloids. They play a key role in reducing inflammation in the gut and throughout the body, which is crucial for managing autoimmune conditions like MS. When it comes to a strict carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis, you won't find any phytonutrients. However, if you still want to pursue the diet, herbal teas can be a great way to add phytonutrients without introducing carbs, fiber, or sugar. There are other diets related to carnivore, such as paleo, keto, Terry Walls protocol, and other low-carb diets, which do allow for phytonutrients. If you're looking for a balance between carb control and the benefits of phytonutrients, these options may be worth exploring. Just remember, with a strict carnivore diet, you'll miss out on the anti-inflammatory effects of phytonutrients which are important for managing MS symptoms. Next, let's look at macronutrient requirements. The carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis does a pretty good job fulfilling macronutrient requirements. Macronutrients include carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. You can easily calculate your macronutrient needs using the calculator on my website by entering your height, weight, and activity level. If you follow a carnivore diet, you'll need to adjust these macros by increasing your fat and protein intake while reducing carbohydrate. 
In general, a diet that gets half of its calories from fat is normally a good thing, although I don't particularly like the saturated fats in meats, which are associated with certain inflammatory processes. I also don't like the animal-based cholesterol in the meat, which can allow for increases in arachidonic acid in the body. I describe both of these pathways of inflammation in multiple sclerosis, my other videos on this channel. So if you need a refresher, feel free to look at those videos. Now, when I design a multiple sclerosis diet for my clients, they're generally lower in carb anyways, for obvious reasons. And most of the fats come from plant-based omega sources, so you don't have these problems. From a macronutrient perspective, the carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis works well, but it's important to manage the fats and cholesterols to avoid potential inflammation. Next, let's look at microbiome specificity. Let's go back to this equation. Bad bacteria and fungus feed on carbs, leading to inflammation. The carnivore diet removes carbs, but does it promote the growth of good bacteria? The answer is definitely no. Now, I know this might stir up some debate, because there are people on YouTube who believe that the gut microbiome diversity actually improves on the carnivore diet. There are even entire Reddit threads dedicated to this argument, but from my experience reviewing hundreds, if not thousands of stool studies, I've never seen a healthy microbiome in someone following the carnivore diet with multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis-related inflammation is often caused by gut microbiome dysfunction. That's why when we start the program, we start it with patented probiotics from Japan, which helps rebalance the microbiome and push out harmful bacteria. But how do we ensure the growth of good bacteria? It's not by avoiding carbs. It's by selecting the right phytonutrients. And this is where the mind-gut immunity method excels. We carefully design an MS diet to promote the growth of beneficial bacteria, which lay down a competitive biofilm that crowds out the harmful bacteria and fungus. Over several weeks, the body produces fewer pro-inflammatory markers like TNF alpha and interleukin-6 as the good bacteria flourish. The main issue with carnivore diets for multiple sclerosis is that it doesn't address the root problem. Temporarily, you're not feeding the bad bacteria by avoiding carbs, but once you reintroduce carbs, fats, or sugar, your symptoms will return. And I've seen this happen repeatedly. People fail the carnivore diet because it's not sustainable long-term. They develop new plaques in their MRIs in both their brain and spinal cord, and when they go back to eating carbs, their symptoms just return because the microbiome dysfunction was never addressed. On the other hand, the Fido diet solves the underlying microbiome issues. This gives you more freedom with the MS diet in the long-term, even allowing you to cheat without any major consequences. I teach my MS patients how to incorporate cheat meals by the second or third month of the program once we've resolved most of the gut issues. While the carnivore diet can help during flare-ups, it's not a sustainable long-term strategy when compared to the phyto diets that we create. Over the years, I've had many discovery calls with people who've tried the carnivore diet for MS but didn't find long-term success. Most of them experienced some temporary relief, but their symptoms returned once they started eating carbs again. And this is a story I hear often. My hope is that this review helps you decide if the carnivore diet is the right approach for managing MS. While it can help short-term, fixing the gut microbiome is key to long-term relief. Now, let's cover the final criteria, food sensitivities and multiple sclerosis. Food sensitivities are often a big concern for people with multiple sclerosis. And in my presentation, I talk about four primary food sensitivity tests that are available. The skin prick test, the IgE blood test, the IgG4 blood test, and the newer mediator release blood test. If you need more information on these tests, I recommend watching my video on food sensitivity testing for MS. Now, let's talk about complex proteins, something I mentioned in my previous talks related to the carnivore diet. Now, there is a significant risk of developing a sensitivity to one or more types of meat, or even eggs, and that's why the carnivore diet can be risky for multiple sclerosis as it limits your food options and increases the likelihood of developing sensitivities. All right, that's my talk. In the comments below, tell me your experience with MS with carnivore-type diets and what's worked for you and what didn't. I'm curious to hear about your experiences. As you know, I've had great success using the mind-gut immunity method in my clients, and I'm a strong supporter of customized phyto diets for MS and focused gut microbiome recalibration for our clients to achieve long-term success. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. As always, this is Dr. Chanu Dastri with the Mind-Gut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.